finally, I'd like to introduce Juan Melendez, who spent nearly 18 years on the bar of his death row for a crime he did not commit. I want to tell, tell how I was survived. I represent who is too innocent. A group that, that can lay on the shoulders and cry and we know each other when we can relate. How I was survived. When I went to that road, I did not know how to read, did not know how to write and speak English. If I say five words in English at that time, three of them were was cross words. <laughs> so the ones that they they call the worst of the worst. The ones that some prosecutors call monsters. They told me how to read, how to write, and how to speak English. That's how I was about. Another way I was about to was in powers, writing me letters. And it's important for all of you to write them. That helped me to survive too. I survived by also by dreaming. It was a time that I, didn't want, I wanted to commit suicide. I got tired of it. And the only way out was to commit it. I never see my friends commit suicide because I cannot see through the walls. But I also saw when they wheel the body out. They take a garbage, a garbage bag, and they make a noose, and make a rope, they put it in the neck, they tie it up in the cell door bars, and throw it in the cell down, and they die. So a lot of my friends did it. And, and, and sometimes that I wanted to do it too. But when I wanted to do it, it Dreams came to me, beautiful dreams. I grew up in Puerto Rico. When I, when I look to the east side, it's a wonderful, wonderful mountain. And I walk to the south, six minutes to the south, I've been the most beautiful beach in the world, at least to me. So God brought me these dreams. And every time I, I, I was wise enough to grab the dreams and, 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 and hang on them and say, hey, this life will come back. And that's how I survived, beautiful dreams. And I, and I got a confession to make. I'm still a dreamer. I dream every day and night that one day the death penalty will be about us. And I have done a lot of work in Texas. I've been an apostle and in police commission to, 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 take the, to take the death penalty issue to legislators and try to be the monitor. And I'm telling you, I got hope in Texas, in spite of all this killing. I believe that Texas will be one of them to get La Paris, because there's some good people in here. Like I said, I'm still a dreamer. And I dream that Texas also would, be, would, would, would think, at least in the monitor, and think about this killing. And that's how I, I want to close this. There's some good people in here. All the, the problem with the death penalty is this. It's all about details, it's all about education. People need to know that it costs too much. People need to know that it's racist. People need to know that they don't deter crime. People need to know that all <coughs> Texas or, or any Nancy or any country that has it will always be a risk to rescue an innocent one. And I will fin finalize with this. And I learned for a, for a friend of mine from Dead Row, and I will call him. His name is Freddie Pickens right here. He, he said, you always can release an innocent man from prison, but you never, and I can repeat, you never can release an innocent man from prison. God bless you. It's a lot more.